Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Empire. That's right, the Hat Glass Empire. We're here, and we're doing a test of our brand new SSDO space plane. As you can see, we've got all this lovely panning going on here. Uh, this is the HDE Pelican C. HDE standing for Hat Glass Empire. Yep. And uh, C standing for Carrier, as you can see by looking in there. We have a lovely little satellite loaded in there. We're going to get that into orbit, drop it off there, and come back. And then land. That's the plan, at least. We we haven't tested this yet. We have no idea where this is gonna go. Um, it was a bit of a bit of a pain trying to get a pilot <laughs> for a completely untested plane. We're, we haven't we haven't even taken this thing out yet. We don't have no idea what's gonna happen. Our R and D just finished it, but you know we'll see. This could be the future of space travel. You know, SSTOs just flying it up and flying it right back. You know, if we could get this thing working, we could have a secure transfer way. Up in space. Now down in the corner there you can see our video feed of our um, fantastically brave pilot. Uh, his name is Bill Kerman, I believe. Um, <laughs> we had a bit of a problem here with the gear being stuck on takeoff, but we managed to get that sorted. And uh, we're off. Uh, tests have shown the takeoff speed of uh, this plane to be about 160 meters a second. So when we get there we'll get up in the air. And uh, yeah. Luckily we have this fantastic video feed, uh, magically somehow of oh, this, this flight. Uh, there, there we go, Bill's up in the air. He's uh, taking the Pelican up to an angle of about 45 degrees until he levels off about 10 kilometers up. We're going to then begin to pick up speed until he reaches orbital speed where he will then obviously get into orbit. You know, that, that's generally how it works with SSTO, you know, so you kind of get into orbit. You know, it's into orbit. So, yeah. This, this was this was a bit of a pain to put together. You know, the Hackfast Empire, we've seen better days. You know, our space program, it's kind of... I don't get on the back burner. But, you know, we, we brought it back. And uh, we've managed to produce something quite amazing, as you can see by looking at this. Uh, this is just looking from Bill's view here. You can see that it's a very advanced cockpit. It looks absolutely gorgeous. His view forward is kind of a bit skewed, but that's okay. Um, so anyway, so we're just continuing our ascent here. Um, Use the um, saber engines on there, as you can see. They're really, qu they're really quite amazing. They're really absolutely awesome. They uh, double as both rocket and jet engines. So usually on an SSTO design, you would have to put both rocket and jet engines, and then turn one off and turn the other on, depending on whether you're in or out of atmosphere. Um, but with the saber engines, I can just hit a button. I can just okay, it's eye stuff. Bill can just hit a button, and then. Um, switch. So we're just leveling off with 10 kilometers here. Uh, we're going to begin gaining speed really fast. Actually, still not really fast. We really won't start to gain some serious speed around, around about 20 kilometers. So we're getting our slowest, slowest at gaining speed. Uh, careful to watch our uh, air intake to make sure we don't uh, flame out, which would be bad. Um, because that would result in lots of spinning. Now some cool features that this uh, Space plane features. Obviously, the uh, features that are features are obviously the Saber engines, which are absolutely amazing. Um, we also have a whole bunch of control services, which are a bit spazzy, but that's okay. We also have something really cool that I, I love. Um, we got air brakes, which are phenomenal. They make landing about 900 times easier. You know, kind of, uh, I'm not going to say easier, going to make landing possible, like on any terrain. So, hopefully landing will go well, you know? Well, I, I mean, I'm getting a bit ahead of myself here, you know? Um, <laughs> we're not even in orbit yet. We're not even, like, out of the atmosphere yet. So we'll just have to see how it goes. Uh, but Bill's just checking his uh, air intakes, making sure he's still getting uh, enough to keep everything running. There's still enough, quite a lot of air getting into the engine, so we should be fine for quite a while. Um, we're still getting altitude, getting speed, everything is going very well. Uh, yeah, sometimes we just uh, did some uh, <laughs> simulations of this plane. Things did not have it going this well, which is, which is good, though. I think it's not good that simulations didn't have it going well. It's good that it's going so well, you know, because we had to pay the bill a very large amount of money <laughs> to get him to actually come out in this thing. And we also had to promise to give it to his family in the uh, all likely circumstance that he doesn't return. But, you know, things are looking up for him. They're looking up for him. Of course, you know, it's kind of hard to say that when you're traveling at, like, 500 meters per second at, like, 14 kilometers up, you know. Uh, 
We did begin, begin uh, gaining altitude very slowly here for a while. That's just an error of Bill Small where he let his, um, his pitch get a little bit too low. He managed to regain it there before he started losing altitude. So uh, it was just a minor failure on his account, of course. Um, a bit of trouble keeping it steady here. He did manage to recover. Good job, Bill. Um, give me a medal for that. Yeah. Uh, I'll give him a hat for that. What do we get? It's a hat class on fire. Can't give him a hat. Give him a hat. Okay, anyways. Well, no, that wasn't that. Was, yeah, okay, yeah, we'll give him a hat. We'll give him a hat when he gets back. Um, I don't know if we'll wear it, but we'll give him a hat. We sure we'll give him a hat. So we're approaching uh, 15 kilometers. No, we're not approaching. We just passed 15 kilometers. Gosh darn it. <laughs> just passed 15 kilometers up. Getting, beginning to gain some uh, pretty serious speed, which is pretty good. And uh, yeah, all is going well. Usually, this is the part where our um, simulations had everything blowing up, the plane spinning, and the, the cockpit kind of breaking in half. But you know, that's good. That's good. That's not. That's not happening. Good for Bill. Good for Bill. And also good for us because this, this plane wasn't cheap. You know, especially for a very underfunded space program. But that's good. That's good that we're doing very well. This is good. Hopefully, everything continues going this well. We're starting to um, get some heat occurring on the uh, body and wings of our craft here. So that's nothing to worry about. We planned for that. Um, we uh, put, put a bit of insulation on there, went to uh, the Home Depot, bought some, put it around the cockpit, put it around the fuel. So we assume that should be enough. Shouldn't, shouldn't get, well, it shouldn't get like over 40 degrees, right? You know, it's, it's just fine. Just fine. Um, I assume it's fine, because Bill isn't, isn't shouting or melting yet, so that's okay. That's okay. Okay, we're approaching 19 kilometers, I think. Maybe if he's a bit fuzzy, but um, I think that was 19 kilometers. We are getting to a bit of a sketchy range, so I assume all's going well. Our intake area is going to be a bit low. We're leveling, Bill is leveling out a bit, just to uh, give those air intakes a bit of time to catch up. Uh, I cannot see our speed. I think we're approaching 900 meters a second. Again, the video feed is getting a bit fuzzy from way up there and way over there, obviously. This is probably gone about halfway across Kerbin by now, but, you know. Just on a side note, something that always bothered me about KSP, um, for some reason, whenever you're traveling forward, re-entry effects still always look like they're on an angle, which always sketches me out. Because they go, no, why am I going out diagonal? But whatever. Um, that's just me nagging. Uh... So Bill, still doing a great job. He looks a little bit scared down there in the corner. I, well, I know, wouldn't be traveling at like a gajillion meters a second. Like, really high off the ground. Like an almost orbital trajectory. Trajectory. Over, uh, whatever. Orbital velocity, I don't know. I'm not a, I don't, I'm pretending to be a scientist here. It's not working. Okay, so um, another cool thing that we put on this, uh, this lovely space plane. Well, so I don't, you can probably see them. I can't, but you can, you can probably see them after I'm finished with this video. Um, on the nose there, we have two of those little tiny radial engines. Now, what those will do, when we um, when we switch those sabers into rocket mode and uh, close the intakes and all that, do all that cool stuff, what we're going to do is fire those rockets at the front. And what that will do, it will throw the nose up, so that way, once... Because pretty much when, when we're going to be switching, we're going to already have pretty darn close to orbital velocity. So we're going to throw that up, because then we just want to get, we want to get above 70 kilometers, so we stop losing, um, losing speed. Here we go, we've done it right now. Let's see, look, our nose is pushing up. Normally it would not be pushing up that much. I know it doesn't look that substantial, but that, that really makes a whole world of difference. At least in our simulations. Um, the ones that got this far. So he's beginning to push the plane upward. He's looking for a, um, for an altitude above 70 kilometers, or at least a projected altitude. So that way, um, we can get into at least an orbital height. Uh, he's, tur he's turning the, uh, the lift engines off. He's throttling down because he just wants to mainly keep his uh, velocity now. He looks like he has, he's done it. He just needs a bit more, I think. I can't really see that. <laughs> this video feed, even on, um, on Bill's uh, heads-up display, he's even a, um, a bit off. It's all a feed from his cockpit, so it's a bit hard to read. 
He's just going to be uh, burning to get, get himself solidified in an upward tra trajectory. Just giving it a bit more. Keeping himself there. He should, uh, he should he'll stop his burn right at any time now. And there he is. He's just stopped his burn. And now he's uh, going to wait until we get up into our orbital altitude. If that's a thing. I know he's just going to plot his maneuver first. Okay. Sure. Fine. Fine, Bill. Don't, don't do what I say. He's just uh, trying to get an even orbit plotted out. Because even orbits are nice, you know. We're going to be leaving a satellite up here, so we want to want to make sure it's in an even... Um, an evenness. Now, you could see a few more satellites up there. Those are just a few things that we delivered on rockets, unmanned. The, um... Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, I'm confusing myself. Bill, Bill is the first person in orbit in the uh, HGE. He's the first one to have done it. He's just, um... He's very proud. He's also very afraid because you know, we have we have tried manned uh, orbital flights before. They haven't gone very well. Yeah, sorry about that. Sorry, Jeb. Uh, <laughs> yeah, Je Jeb's dead. Sorry. Um, so here he's just uh, setting up his trajectory for his. Why don't I use that word so much? I don't even know what it means. Oh, the music started. Okay, whatever. Um, <laughs> he's just set up. He's heading, I guess, for um, for his maneuver coming up so he can get into orbit. And it's going to be great. It's going to be absolutely great. Yeah. So here we're just um, accelerating time. Because although we can't get a uh, space plane into orbit, we can't accelerate time. That's what we spent all the time working on, is how to accelerate time. So we're just accelerating time here. This is something we've mastered a long time ago. Now that's easy. Accelerating time. So we're just lining up. We're getting our burn now. Now, unfortunately, due to the uh, design of this spaceman, as you can see, the engines aren't quite symmetrical top to bottom. So we can't give it full throttle. And even at like, you know, like a port of throttle like we're at now, we, um, we need to be feathering the RCS to keep it at a uh, the heading we want. So burns do take a bit longer, but you know, the, the saber engines pack quite a punch. So it's quite fine, you know. It would have been nice if uh, if we had had them uh, symmetrical or whatever. So that, that whenever the map changes like that, or the view changes like that, that's that's when you know we've got an orbit. I just want to solidify, make sure it's a proper orbit of uh, boost above 70 kilometers on both sides. So I was finishing my maneuver, Bill's maneuver. I don't know, maybe I am Bill. I don't know why I'm saying this. Okay, so we're just checking that we're we're in orbit. Oh yeah, lovely. Okay, so Bill's been given instructions to uh, release the satellite on during day on the on the light side of Kerbin. So he's just uh, we're just accelerating time over to the light side of, uh, of Kerbin because we can do that. So we're just going to level out the craft. Bill's going to level out the craft. Fantastic pilot he is. Look at that. Look at great pilot he feels. Just going to level out. We can open up the cargo bay in a moment. Um, just, just making sure it's perfectly level. He doesn't want to screw it up. Cargo bay open. Lovely, lovely. And there's the satellite. Now he's released it. It's away. Uh oh. Oh dear. Ah. This was supposed to have RCS on it. Guys. Oh dear. Well, so much for maneuvering that. Well then, I guess, uh. <laughs> I guess we're not using RCS. <laughs> well, it's okay. We'll just fly it away from the ship. Using that rocket we put on. That's okay. Whatever. Whatever. And it's been a near successful mission so far. Something had to go wrong. So we're just going to leave um, leave the Pelican in the dust and set the satellite on its own orbit. On its own orbit. God, I can't speak words. Um, I'm going to put those panels out. And look at that. Look at that. That's gorgeous. Aw, oh, man. You darn done it, Bill. Now you just got to get back alive. Good job. Good job. There's a hat waiting for you, my friend. There's a hat waiting for you. Okay. So now, we're gonna plot Bill's uh, return course. Um, does anybody remember where the um, Kerbal Space Center was? Um, Bill, I thought you knew this. Bill! Oh, come on. Well, this isn't good. It looks like we're gonna have to um, attempt to land the craft on um, on rough terrain, rather than landing on a runway. Bill has been trained for this, but um, 
I don't know. <laughs> he's, uh, he's a little rusty. We only did it once. And that was in a simulator. So, we'll have to see how it goes. Hopefully, hopefully Bill can do it. We're, we're trusting Bill. So he's gonna plot a maneuver, and hopefully try to land the, uh, this plane somewhere where it's day, because that would suck if we have to land it in the dark. Because we certainly haven't practiced that. You know. So here we go. He's plotting himself a course. He's gonna point to the, uh, node. He's a bit nervous at this point, because he's just been informed that, uh, but, but we don't know where the Kerbal Space Center is from orbit. Because we've never been there. Everything looks different. You know, we only we don't, we still believe the curve was flat until we got up here. So, you know. Accelerating time has nothing to do with telling you if, if uh curve is flat or not. We did overshoot um our pro grade marker a little bit. Bill Bill Bill's nervous, you know, you can forgive him. So it's just gonna point pro grade and then um move the notes of the craft upwards to point at the correct thing for note. Just point pro grade fixing his uh yar a bit, or roll even. Upward now. Very careful. He doesn't want to overshoot anymore. He's already wasted enough RCS fuel as it is. He's now pointing at the correct node. Uh, as soon as he gets on there, I believe he's going to accelerate time. Is the plan? So, you know, accelerating time is something we do all the time, as, as I've said before. We're very good at it. We, we practice it a lot. You know, whatever. Accelerating time. Do it all the time. Do it all the time. So here we go. We're accelerating time. Just uh, buzzing along here. Okay. Here we go. Approaching our maneuver. Just getting ready. This will, this will deorbit ourselves here, if that's a word. Okay, here we go. Should be throttling up any second now. Oh, oh dear, oh dear, oh dear. Bill, what are you doing? You left the front engines on. Ugh, Bill. Okay, there's nothing to be that nervous. Just landing on rough terrain. We practiced this. <sighs> Come on, Bill. Jeez, man. Okay. Nope. He's getting excited. <laughs> Trying to throttle her. Like, what are you doing? Bill! Come on! Okay. Here we go. Here we go. Okay. We're just going to give ourselves a bit of a better heading here. We're throttling up more than we have before. But everything seems to be holding together. We're not. Oh. Oh, dear. Well, we've, we've just we've just run out <laughs> of uh, of oxidizer. Oh, crap. Well, Bill, you're landing in the dark. <laughs> wow. If, it, if he wasn't nervous before, which he was, he's certainly nervous now. All right, all right, all right, Bill, you can do this. You can do this, Bill. You got this. All right, he's just pointing himself pro grade to um, prepare for re-entry because there's a considerably, considerable, considerable uh, larger amount, considerably larger amount of uh, feet shielding along the bottom of the craft. Uh, which, which is good, because then, you know, we wouldn't want to roast poor Bill. Because he, he, you know, he's a good guy. He's a good guy, you know? He has a family. I, I, I like him, you know? I like him because he's stupid, and he agreed to do this mission for us. Which is good. And he's also a very skilled pilot, which is fantastic. Good old Bill. We love Bill. <laughs> we love you, Bill. Okay, we're just putting prograde, preparing for, um, for re-entry. I believe there's going to be some, uh, some time warping action. Here we go, yep. Yeah. Unfortunately, we have drifted away from prograde through time warping, which is kind of annoying. But okay, whatever, 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 sure, sure. Okay, we've just uh, re-entered the atmosphere. Suddenly seems very quiet. Um, it's because everyone's very concerned about Bill. They had to turn off the music. That, that's, you know, that was our plan to play that music when, um, when Bill got into orbit. But um, but now that we're very nervous, we're going to let Bill apply his full attention to the task at hand. Shaking around a bit in there, it's getting a bit turbulent. Although it may not look it for some reason, I don't know why he's bouncing around in there so much. Perhaps he's nervous and he has to pee. I don't know. We'll, we'll find out, though. When he lands... Oh, he's kind of shouting a bit now. Come down there, Bill. <laughs> okay. Re-entry is now occurring. Um, things are getting a little hot in there for Bill, I'm sure. But, uh, I'm sure he'll be fine. As, as long as he's not melting, I think we're good. As long as he's not melting. Melting is bad. You know, it's unless, okay, as you probably assumed, melting is very bad. But uh, he's not melting, so that's good. Not, that's good. That's very good. Not, not melting. You know, that's ideal. All right. He's losing speed uh, at, at a decent rate. You know, we need to lose a fair amount of speed because um, 
Simulations show that the uh, ideal landing speed for this craft is around 120 meters a second. If we can land at that speed, that's that's the that's the safe threshold. You know, if we can land at that, then life is good. I know that may still may sound really fast. You know, that's kind of because it is. But you know, there's a lovely picture for you. Um, we just thought for uh, all the folks watching at home, we should clear off the uh, screen. Red Bill has re-engaged his, um, his saber engines on uh, everything. So now we're only consuming uh, liquid fuel and uh, intake air, which we now have enough of. Look to uh, continue flying. So well, I think the plan is that Bill's going to temper land along the coast of uh, the, that landmass straight ahead of us. So he's forcing the plane down to uh, lose some altitude. I don't think Bill, Bill realizes how far off he is from that land. so much. Look <laughs> at the trail. <laughs> it's like a wave. That's really entertaining. Okay. Wow. So we're quite low at this point. Um, we're just kind of uh, making sure we're all good for landing because uh, landing is quite, quite difficult. Um, I think Bill was successful about three times of ten. Landing this, landing this craft in simulation. And it's a successful meaning that the cockpit survived. Um, I don't think he only did it once, and once out of everything, which was a lot of times, I don't even remember. Um, once out of a lot of times, actually landed the aircraft fully intact. But um, nobody tell him that either. Nobody remind him of that. Bill, you can do it. We love you. <laughs> okay, we're just approaching over the landmass. Uh, Bill is preparing to deploy his uh, air brakes. I've turned the landing lights on so you can see the ground much better. Should go. So the, the air brakes are out. Um, the airspeed is dropping rather nicely to around the uh, specified uh, 120 meters per second, which is lovely. Now, uh, Bill, I would I would recommend uh, not to rush you, by the way, but I would recommend landing this plane fairly quickly because it looks like there's a, um, a bunch of big hills coming up. So you got a lovely flat spot here. So set the plane down, please, please now. Here we go. He's going in for it. Brakes are on. Everything's ready. Here we go. Here we go. Here we go. Oh, oh, oh dear. Oh, he's not. Oh, oh, he's on the ground. He's on the ground. Okay. Oh, that's not good. Oh, oh no. Oh, oh, oh. 
Oh my god, he's alive. Bill! Yes! Yes, Bill! Bill, you managed to break every single engine! <laughs> wow. You managed to break, break the plane perfectly symmetrically. And then... <laughs> my god, he balanced it! Bill, we don't pay you enough. What the heck? Holy crap, Bill. You are amazing, Bill. We love you. You are the best. Oh my goodness. So good. So good. <laughs> I can't, can't believe he broke the plane symmetrically. Wow. Well, there was a 30% chance of that happening, and he did it. 30%. Yeah, good job, Bill. Alright. That's, uh, that's a victory for the um, Atlas Empire. That, that is, uh, that is a, a sure victory. And I'm sure there'll be many more to come. Uh, probably intermixed with a large amount of failure. But that's okay. That's okay. Failure, failure is, you know, just... There's no proper way around that, is there? Anyways, um, thank you everyone for watching. If you made it this far, which will probably be no one, but whatever. You know, whatever. I'm here talking to myself. I'm up for it. And, uh, yeah. Um, order to the Empire and all that, and uh, we'll see you next time.